Hey everybody, Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis. This is going to be such a fun video, even though it sounds really scary, okay? In this one, we're gonna be talking about understanding heterogeneity. It sounds scary. It sounds like a big, huge word, lots of scariness associated with it, but it's not, it's totally fun. Let's check it out. So by the end of this video, I want you to be able to identify key heterogeneity statistics that we see in meta-analysis, as well as interpret them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's work on understanding heterogeneity in a conventional meta-analysis first, okay? This is that two-level model, and it's what we see most often in the educational sciences as of now. We got three statistics we want to really pay attention to. First, our Q statistic. This is essentially asking, is there significant heterogeneity in the sample more than a random chance would predict? Here, we're looking for a p-value. If p is less than 0.05, that means there is significant heterogeneity. Okay, next we have our I-squared value. This is essentially asking how much variation is due to the true heterogeneity. And we interpret this a little bit differently. We interpret this by percentages, or the output that we get as a percentage, with 0 to 25% being low, 25 to 50% being considered moderate, 50 to 75% being substantial, and 75 to 100% being considerable. And last but not least, we have this statistic called tau squared, okay? And this is the one I think gives people the most pause and tends to be the most challenging to understand. And in fact, we often don't even see it talked about in conventional meta-analyses. Usually people report Q statistic and I squared. They don't talk about tau squared, but maybe they should because tau squared is the estimate of variance of the true effects, which is only the between study heterogeneity. Okay, so now we have these three key concepts. Let's actually see what they uh, what they mean. But before we do that, I want to I, I want to go through a little bit of a statistical question here because this is something that I know I've thought about and if you're a stats nerd like me, maybe this occurred to you if you understand the relationships between like standard deviation and variance and those types of things. So if we run a random effects meta-analysis, we're going to be given an overall effect size, which I referred to here as an estimate, and we're also going to be given a standard error for that effect size. Now the question that occurs to me is, other than being a standard error rather than a standard deviation, what is the difference between the standard error of the model and tau? Because we know tau squared is the variance, right? If we look here, we can see tau squared is the variance, and we know that the square root of the variance is a standard deviation. So what's the difference between these two, right? So <laughs> these, are, these are kind of the fun things that you think about as a stats nerd. So if you're not a stats nerd, I'll just tell you the answer. So tau is the standard deviation of only between study heterogeneity. Meanwhile, the model estimate is actually including within and between study heterogeneity. So a small but very important difference for us to understand here, okay? Um, and it really highlights the importance of tau and tau squared. Okay, so let's get back to actual practical application now and looking at some output from metaphor in R, uh, you can see on the right hand side, I have highlighted in green the ones that we're going to in particular be looking at here, the statistics we're going to be looking at. The first one is our Q statistic, and we can see that we have uh, degrees of freedom and a number and that p-value. And if you recall, we're looking for the p-value to be less than 0.05 to indicate there's significant heterogeneity. That's essentially what we're asking, is there more than random chance? This is including both within and between study heterogeneity. In this case, P is less than 0.05, so we can say yes, there is significant heterogeneity in the sample. Okay, great. Next, we're going to move to I squared to find out what percent we have, right? So how much variation is due to true heterogeneity between study? And what we can see is we actually have 73.5% in our results, which falls into that substantial category. Last but not least, we're gonna look at tau squared, which is asking us about the estimate of the variance of the true effects between studies. And we can see that that is 0.2372, which if we round it is 0.24. Okay, so now let's think about this in relation to a three-level meta-analysis, right? We're gonna actually have the same statistics, but it's gonna be a little bit different application because we actually have one additional level in our model. So let's check this out. Here are the results from metaphor of a three-level meta-analysis. And you can see the way it's displayed is a little bit different. We still have our test for heterogeneity. That's our Q statistic. But up above that, it looks a little bit different. And so what we have is sigma 2.1 and sigma 2.2. These are estimates of tau squared, okay? But first, we are going to look at our Q statistic. As we can see, it is less than 0.05 here. It is 0.001, which means there is significant heterogeneity within our sample. Next, we're gonna look at tau squared. 
So sigma 2.1, that's the first line there. That is our between cluster. So if you look over on the right, it says factor, and you can see we have studies. And when we set up this model and metaphor uh, using R, what we did is we nested effect sizes within studies. So if you think about the, um, the levels we showed before, this would be that uh, third level there where it's actually what it is nested within. So we can see that we had 12 studies by looking at the N levels. So that's the fourth column here. We can say N levels, we had 12 studies. And then in total, if we look below that, we can see we had 35 effect sizes. So that might be another way to help you think about this. Cycling back here, sigma 2.1 is the tau squared value for between cluster. And you can see that we have an estimate of 2.68, okay? When we go look at sigma for 2.2, that is our within cluster. That is all of our um, studies with, I'm sorry, all of our effect sizes within each study. And you can see that's a much smaller estimate, right? 0.16. So between studies, we have an estimate of 0.68. Within studies, we have an estimate of 0.16. Keep those numbers in mind because next we're gonna look at I squared. So these are our results from our I squared here. And if we look at level two, level two is within our clusters. And if you remember, this was smaller. Our tau squared was smaller here, right? So when we actually look at this, this says it was only 5.63% of the variance can be explained by that level of the model. So when we think about this, recall sigma 2.2 was also small, right? 0.16. Now let's look at where our sigma 2.1 was actually larger, right? And that's at level three. This is between our studies here. This is where we are seeing the most variance according to our tau squared. And here, this is going to reiterate that for us. This confirms that because our I squared here is 91.56%. And if we recall, sigma 2.1 was 2.68. So we can see that these two statistics essentially agree because we're seeing that tau squared is a bigger number and that's associated with the bigger percentage as compared to the other level of the model. Now, one of the things that confused me at first when looking at these diagrams is that level two and level three here are presented in this format where it's level one, level two, level three. Whereas when we look at the previous model, it goes in the opposite order, right? So you can see that here we have level three, then level two. Whereas here, we have level two, then level three. That's just something that's gonna take your brain a little bit of practice to get used to. I know for me, it took me running probably like four or five models before I actually like didn't have to always refer back to textbooks and, and just confirm I was interpreting things correctly. Um, one of the ways that you can kind of confirm this to yourself is to see, does it make sense with the tau squared statistics what you're finding with I squared? So if tau squared is bigger, I would expect that my I squared for that level is going to be bigger. Okay, so the last thing that we have displayed in our results here is the total I squared or the total amount of variation that is um, explained by our model. And you can see that's displayed at the bottom, 97.19%, which is a lot. Okay, so let's summarize, okay? Because I know we went through a bunch of different statistics here, but what is the takeaway point? Takeaway point is this. Heterogeneity is really important in meta-analysis. We need to examine three key statistics, Q, I squared, and tau squared. They tell us different things, and it's really important that we understand what those things are, okay? So what you're most often going to see actually reported in a meta-analysis that you read is probably going to be the Q statistic, and again, we're looking to see if it's significant or not, and the I squared statistic, which is a percentage. Those are by far the two most common heterogeneity statistics I see reported in papers. I see much fewer papers actually report tau squared, but that doesn't mean it's not important, and if you're running meta-analyses, please consider what your tau squared is as well. Okay, so this concludes our video on heterogeneity and meta-analysis. I hope you found these explanations helpful, and I look forward to seeing you guys in our next video. Thank you.